Okay. What is up you guys and welcome back to Brittany Automotive. I know this video looks a little different than usual, but I really want to put my short block together and I'm learning a lot while I'm doing it. I have not put it together. I have not even started. And it was mainly because I was trying to figure out what setup to go with and what I really wanted to do with it and what I wanted to get out of it. And as I've been doing that, I've been learning a lot and I want to explain that stuff to you and I, got, I want to help you guys in any way that I can. So I'm still waiting on piston rings from Total Seal and I want to go into a full detailed video of that. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I did an install, but I kind of want to explain that more because I just put stock rings back into it and I really didn't know all the stuff that I've learned now. They can add a lot of horsepower when you do it. So I'm waiting on those and then my heads are off being milled and hopefully I get my rings back this week and it can go back together this weekend, the short block, and then we'll be really close to an engine because they don't take long to build once you have all the stuff. So, but today I do want to go over pistons because I know for one of my videos I did fly cutting pistons, um, learned a lot there, but I also wasn't sure if I was going to keep those stock pistons. So I threw up the idea of possibly getting aftermarket pistons. And the reason for that is simply because these are hyper eutectic uh, pistons. So that's just the material they're made of. And that basically means that they're pretty light and they're pretty durable. So they're pretty, stock is pretty like midway. What I was debating on was going to forged alloy pistons, which are a lot, lot lighter, way lighter and even more durable. So basically the goal with your pistons is to get the lightest and the most durable. Sounds about the same for everything on a race car. So that's what I was going for. Um, some things to look at on these pistons. So you either have compression domes to build compression. So there'll actually be a dome that comes out on some of these pistons and that's simply to increase compression. And uh, these have valve reliefs. So I'll get into valve reliefs and whatnot later because That'll probably be included in my heads video because I also want to test for piston valve clearance because I did talk about that in fly cutting and then I didn't go into much detail. So then, yeah. But another thing, you have your piston skirts here and then you have your pin bore here. So this is where your rod goes up in here. Um, and then you'll have three grooves. You have your top groove, your second groove, and your oil ring groove. And I will go into a full detail on uh, piston rings when I get those back from Total Seal. So you guys will see that and how to put them together and all that good stuff. So one thing I do want to mention is on these piston skirts, that's kind of where the force is pushing on when the engine is on. So another thing is these walls up on the top are tapered in like this. It's very hard to see, but they taper in. And it's simply because the hotter the engine is getting, um, this is going to start to expand and it's going to try to expand into the wall, but you want piston to wall clearance. So they are tapered in when they grind these pistons, as you can see this area right here, this is called a cam ground piston. The dimension from the top to the bottom is greater than the dimensions from side to side. And basically they can be anywhere from low to high. And you can guess what that means. The higher it is, the further away this is compared to what these two are. If that makes any sense. I hope it does. I'm going to put a little graphic on this. Editing Brittany, graphic. Throw that whole explanation because that was rough. This is so difficult. Don't focus on my face. Stop it. Can I be like one of those makeup models? There we go. All right. So this right here is A to the top groove. And then inside that groove is B. Okay, editing Brittany this is gonna be a lot harder. Okay, take a picture of a piston. Okay, there'll, there'll be a picture of a piston overlaid over here. But the, oh fancy, I didn't even notice that. So one thing to look at on a piston is compression height. So compression height is basically the top of the piston to the center of this pin bore. And I will throw a graphic up there of how you do that math. It's not super difficult. But there's a couple things to look at when you're doing this because you can run into serious problems if you don't pay attention. So one of the things is that there is a minimum height that the top 
part of the piston to the first ring can be before it just starts deteriorating while the engine's running at the heat that it's at. And then the next one is the valve reliefs. When they're cut into the piston, um, they cannot be cut past the first oil ring. So if they are, you're gonna have more issues like deterioration and stuff like that. And then another one is if you're building like a longer stroke engine, um, your piston, if it comes down and it doesn't have clearance, it could hit the counterweights on the crank. So you have to watch out for that. And then another thing, so if you don't, if you can see it on this one, you can see that it's cut into the top of the piston here. That is a way to solve it and make it shorter is by throwing this further up here because on most of them, not my stock ones, I thought my stock ones would, but some other pistons there, the pin bore is all the way down here. So your compression height is a lot bigger. So like I said, this was kind of just like a piston know-how of what I've learned and I'm sure there is plenty more to come, but I am going to be doing a video on the piston rings because I learned a lot with that stuff, especially like materials and everything that you can do to manipulate it and actually make power. So that is it for my little tech with Brittany video. Um, I want to start doing these more often, especially as I build this short block. I want to go through every little step of it with you guys and maybe some more math because compression height isn't a hard math equation. So let me know down below if you guys enjoyed this little tech video or if it's just not really your style. Just be honest. Let me know. I want to know what you guys like and what you guys don't. I do want to thank my sponsors, All EFI, Mincer, Motul, and Heatwave. And I will see you guys next week. And hopefully I will see you guys next week with a short block together. And if I don't, then I will see you next week, next week with the short block together. <laughs>